It's Candace Williams, and I'm here with the fabulous Kiki Palmer on ABC Radio. Oh thank my gosh. you so much for stopping by. Girl, thank you for having me. You looking fabulous yourself. Oh, thank you, girl. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. And I'm cheesing so hard because she, you are so magnificent. Right oh now, you're killing it. You're killing it. Thank you so much. Yes. It means a lot to me. Thank yes. you. Yes. And I'm talking about, first and foremost, Berlin Station. Yes. Second season. Oh, my gosh, girl. Epic. I'm so excited. So yes. this is a big thing. Yes. You are playing a new recruit. Yes. Talk about your character. Yes. She got a lot going on, Miss April Lewis. <laughs> yes, April Lewis is definitely a new recruit, and she is all of that and more, you know, just out of school. And she was actually first in her class. So she comes into, you know, this this new gig, and she's very ready to get on the ground running. You know, she's she thinks she knows everything that she needs to know, and she is ready to be that professional. But, of course, like any young adult, you know, going in their new field and really ready but never really got their hands dirty, she realizes that, you know, Things aren't so black and white. You know, it isn't as easy as right and wrong, especially when you're dealing with politics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and there is like a, a new world order that's coming into play. There's a lot of things. Absolutely. That you guys are going to have to be on top of. Exactly. And uh, I saw that you're working with the amazing Ashley Judd. Yes. Can we talk about that experience? Your first oh time gosh. working with her, right? First time working with her. But, you know, of course I grew up on her. Where the heart is, kiss the girls. Yes. I mean, it was so many things that, you know, I grew up seeing her on. So working with her was like, you know, wow, okay. This is Ashley Judd. Like, you know, this is major. And everybody in the cast, you know, Richard Armitage and Michelle Forbes and Leland Orser. So I was already coming into this show, uh, you know, gagged beyond belief of the company that I would be in. And she was awesome. She really is that that Southern belle. And just, yeah. na you know, naturally that's who she is. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love the energy. And I love the, it, I guess in my head, you know, when I think of Kiki, Kiki Palmer, I think of this kick but type oh girl. yes awesome so i was like oh i'm ready for this i'm ready for yes. the ci you know coming in yes. to, to just operative just to take hold of it yes so um hopefully we'll see more of that evolve totally um now you guys filmed in europe correct yes girl we filmed for four months in berlin and, and they actually traveled a lot of other places i think they went to norway and spain and you know so uh, they went to a lot of different places but i did most of my filming in berlin so i was there for the whole four months yeah. and it was really awesome but it was also you know i feel like it helped with my character too because you know you imagine i'm, I'm 24 and it's like that was kind of the first time that i was ever in europe for that long and yeah. the first time i was ever in Germany wow. before then I'd only been to like London you know what I mean yeah. and so this was a totally different place they spoke a totally different language <laughs> but it was really cool because a lot of the Germans actually did speak English so I wasn't yeah. totally uh you know kind of left out in the world like that but it was different it was it was a coming of age period for me for sure yeah you got a lot of love I'm sure yeah I mean, it was awesome like and I didn't know what to expect because I'm like dude I'm like I don't know you know if, they, if anybody here would ever be familiar with my stuff or anything <laughs> like that but it was really cool because they were so that was definitely surprising yeah and I mean you know, I, I say that you're killing it because you have so many other things, too, that you are oh, on man. top of Thank right you. now. I mean, clearly, Berlin Station is a magnificent yes. on Epics. Make sure you guys Ooh, check yes. it out. Coming Thursday. out Sunday, October yeah, yeah, 15th. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, in addition to that, we're going to see you. I, I went on your Instagram, and I was looking. I was like, okay, girl, I see you doing things. <laughs> you um, are going to be in Star Yes, I'm well. excited you to. You were posing with one of the, the castmates. Yes. How was that? Talk about girl, so much fun. Because, first of all, I love Lee Daniels. You know, working with Lee Daniels was always something that I wanted to do. So, being on Star and then working with the cast, I love everybody that's there. You know, all the new talent, all the talent that I've, you know, grown up with. You know, got a lot of great people yeah, uh, this yeah. second season as well on that show. So, it was just awesome in this cast character she's so larger than life Gigi, and I think, right? yes gg she's so larger than life so that comes out very soon that's i'm it comes out wednesday so i'm excited okay. about that yeah. all right i can't wait to see this yes. now is Gigi gonna be singing? Because because we know that Kiki Palmer, <laughs> you know, she got some vocals. You can expect to get something. I'm gonna let you know that. I can't <laughs> let you know too much. But Gigi is a recording artist in the show, and she's definitely thinking of signing to Midtown. Now this is kind of like life imitating art or yeah. to some capacity because yes. you know we we know that you released the ep yes lauren yes lauren yes and i'm working on some new music coming to you soon you know your girl not sleeping on you exactly <laughs> and, and that was actually my follow-up question because oh, the fans really loved it you know i mean it Thank was only you. like five songs yes but, five songs yeah. but but you know they're waiting for this larger project yes. larger than life project um now of course they had a visual component yes so were you inspired by, by Bay? well bit, i mean i'm inspired 
by B in general. You know what I mean? G- B is just, I mean, in Beyonce. terms of, you know, exactly. Well, yeah, let's get it right. Beyonce knows always, you know, Beyonce is one of my inspirations, but also Brandy, also Aaliyah. But I mean, every time when Beyonce raises the bar, I think with any entertainer, even guy or girl, you know, it's always like, dang, girl, you doing your thing. So with my visual album, I think for me, I had worked with R. Kelly uh, a year before I had started on that Lauren EP. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think a lot of times I always felt like I had to make everything so separate with my music and with my acting. Mm-hmm. And after working with R. Kelly, he was like, your theatrical side is not yeah. something that you should shy away from in your yeah. music. He's like, that actually tells your story more when you mm-hmm. add the theatrics and you're able to relate it. Like I did with Trapped in the Closet. He was like, originally, I wanted Trapped in the Closet to be a Broadway show. Mm-hmm. You know, that was how big my vision was for that. Mm-hmm. So acting, theatrics, that should never be separate from your music. And so when I did the Lauren EP, I was like, wow, this is a part that I could really explore. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and they gave me the confidence to not feel like I had to make that separate, but that that's where Kiki Palmer lives in this yeah. kind of multifaceted place. Yeah, and I, I think that's very accurate. And one thing I think we appreciate about you is that you're very no holds barred. You tell oh, it like it you. is. I know in your book, um, yes, you, you, and I'm long to you. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was, gonna, I was just saying, yes, I don't belong to you. I knew what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and finding your voice and yes. being able to be vocal. Um, I have to ask, partly because, you know, I, I feel like it's such an important time for yeah. people to, to, to speak. And, and you represent, you know, a, a certain generation that, mm-hmm. that needs to have a voice as well. Their, sure. their voice is equally as important. Yes. Um. So, you know, obviously... I think uh, one of the things that I think, you said you worked with R. Kelly. Yeah. Have you had any conversations with him recently? No, you know, I know you're talking about the recent stuff. I have, you know, it, it's, and it's so unfortunate when stuff like that happens, you know, because it's like you don't have that relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. So there's really not much that you can say, you know, other than great things. Yeah. That's, and I, I'm grateful for that. That my, yeah. my, experience with R. Kelly has been a mentor to me. He's been nothing but kind to me. He's never done anything crazy to me. So for, you know, when that conversation comes up, it's just kind of like, you know, that's not the Kells that I know. Yeah. You know, the person I know is somebody that took me under their wing when nobody believed in me. I mean, it was, and it was simple. I was literally in an interview talking about Black Panty's album, saying how much I love the album, and he calls me up saying nobody shows me love like that. I would love it if you came down. Let's work together. I know you're from Chicago, and that's the person that I know. So, you know, my my experience is not the one that, you know, the media or so p- could portray. Yeah, understood. You know, everyone has different experience, and I appreciate you, you know, elaborating on yeah, yours. Sure. Um, also, I, I, I know you're kind of in the process. I think you're filming Scream. <laughs> yes, the girl! And I'm so excited. So, uh, to make this clear, Scream Queens was what I did with Ryan Murphy on Fox, and Scream is what I'm doing with MTV, because a lot of times the name, you know, yeah. the names are so similar, people are like, okay, wait a minute, Scream Queens coming back, and no, Scream Queens is done, but I'm doing Scream, which is also produced by Flavor Unit, Queen Latifah's company, I'm mm-hmm. so excited about that, um, and it's coming to MTV uh, 2018, early 2018, mm-hmm. so I don't, you know, we don't have the actual date, because we're still filming it now, right, right. but I'm so excited about that, because this is a world that we've never seen within this Scream franchise you know this is the screen franchise that we know from nev campbell back in the day and so this time we get to use the actual mask which they didn't get to use in the first two seasons and we actually get to use the actual voice and these kids are from college park so it's a total different vibe of screen college park girl yeah call the park (laughs) Exactly, Atlanta. We ain't playing. <laughs> you see how I, ma- I ma- exactly. knew that, right? I knew that exactly. because as somebody who was in the AUC, I went to Spelman. I'm very come on, sis. Come on, come on, Spelman. My sister wants to go to either Spelman or Howard, so yes. I'll let her know that Both we got good. a Spelman sis. Yes, over. yes, absolutely. Now, um, I, and I'm only mentioning because this is like newsworthy, and I and I want to you know see if you have any takes or ideas yeah. on it. Now, Scream is actually one of the executive producers on that is Harvey Weinstein. I know he's been oh, in converse, you know, there's been a lot of coverage I've on him. I've been hearing about this. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know, you know, when you're filming, it's totally different than yeah. being around somebody and so on and so forth. Any thoughts on that? I know a lot of celebrities are talking about that. I mean, is, is there any, I mean, I don't you know, there's know what no, heard. I don't know. I've never met either. I've never met the brothers, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've done two films with them in the past. Uh, I mean, long shots with them in the past with Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, this project. And, you know, it's just unfortunate. You know, I, I, I'd hate that 
you know, that that's what's happening. That's really all that I could say mm-hmm. is that I hate that that's how people feel. But at the end of the day, you have to speak out what you feel that you, you know, what empowers you. Mm-hmm. So more power to those that are speaking up and feeling like, you know, they're getting their voice heard. Yeah. And it goes back to your book, girl. Okay. <laughs> I don't belong to you. Quiet the noise and find your voice. And that's really what it's about. That's really what it's about. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of times in the industry, you go through situations and it becomes difficult because really your eyes on your career, mm-hmm. you know, but it's important that you don't lose yourself in your career. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And how did you find your voice? I, I, I know you talk a lot about this in the book and yeah. this is something you no, but sure. I, I think I want people to understand that this is a evolved Kiki Palmer. This isn't yeah. just you just didn't okay. wake up like Beyonce say flawless. I mean no. we wake up flawless, but at <laughs> some point there's a little bit of development as well. No, and, and really to to what you're saying is I lost my voice. You know, I spent a lot of time for me coming into the acting world, everything was unexpected. So when I reaped benefits or success or whatever you would call it, it was like, dang, okay. And it was the opposite with music. You know, for me, growing up, I always could sing. So when I entered the music industry and I expected the kind of response that I got with acting and I didn't get that response with, you know, just the control and the infrastructure of the music industry as opposed to the actual music itself, Mm -hmm. I felt very... um, like lost you know I felt extremely my, it crushed my ego is what happened mm-hmm. and that's really what it's about it's about our ego you know what yeah. I mean that's what, what what I realized was holding me back in terms of not just my fearlessness and my music that I had as a child but in overall aspects of my life and how I could also uh, take it a step further in my evolution for who I am which is that quiet the ideas that we have attached our, our identity to in our experiences mm-hmm. that are negative and that do not Uh, fuel us forward in a positive way and it's all about changing your mind and your mental constructs and that's when I also went into you know my book is also uh, covers topics on mental health I'm getting ready to do something this Friday with Kaiser Permanente uh, about finding your voice and you know realizing that as a human being, nobody really understands everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. But a main facet of who we are is our ego, our personality, and who we are in this world. And once we realize that we don't belong to what other people think of us and that we don't even belong to the crazy ideas and thoughts that we've accumulated over the years of good things or bad things, that's when we become in control of our lives because we realize that everything is flexible. We realize that I can. Ch- I don't have to feel bad that this guy broke up with me. I can actually feel good and go mm-hmm. forward with my day. I don't have to succumb to this emotion. Or I can. I can let it out, and then I can decide to move forward. So once I realized that all that stuff was in my control, it became easier to practice that in my daily life. Now, of course, it wasn't like a drop of a hat. You know what I mean? It ain't like I'm perfect. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm 24 years old. I'm still learning so many different things. But I feel like that was a real key in me gaining control over my life and really being able to fight for all my goals, you know. Yeah. Girl, are you running for presidency? Like, what's going Girl, on? Girl, well, that's coming next. I'm waiting to be the mayor first. No. <laughs> ABC the mayor. We always got promo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Seriously, girl. And my girl is in that from Scream Queens. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, it's such a Leah. small little world we live and in. And I think that's such a cool concept, yeah. that show. I think it's so fun. And yeah. it's really what I like about it is that it gets the millennials excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there was a time where 19, 20, 21, 22-year-olds were wanting to run for mayor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where that was like kids would say, when I grow up, I want to be the mayor. When I grow up, I want to be the governor. I want to work for the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. That somehow got lost, I feel yeah. like, a little bit in our society. So when I saw that show, I thought what a cool concept to really get kids excited and to see how much control you have because that's where the real power is. We put so much emphasis on the presidency, but the real stuff is the mayors in your city, mm-hmm. the governors, the senators, the people that actually can make change exactly where you are. Now, of course, you want to make sure you're voting for, you know, you're tuned into the president, but the actual people that are kind of telling the president what to do are the ones that are in the Supreme Court, right. or in the Congress, I mean, the ones that are in Congress. Right. And that's the mayors the senators the you know what I mean the those people so I love that that show yeah I actually just spoke to Yvette Nicole Brown she was yes my girl I love her too (laughs) I love her yeah we did True Jackson together years ago yeah and and it's it's amazing I you know you you keep saying and I I say that this partly because it's so amazing that you're only 24 you know I'm only 24 but you've had a career that encompasses a a veteran of this game and and it's thank you and it's and it's amazing it sparkles you you know thank you so much of course and it's the truth you know it's not hard for me to say because it's accurate um so you know of course we we love you i i'm I'm just 
I, I can imagine so much more for you oh, just in this, this, this time span. So, you know, with that being said, um, I, I'm curious. I mean, do you want to tease any any vocals for us? I mean, I'll okay. be here. Because you know I got to switch it up a little bit. I know we're talking about Berlin Station. Make sure y'all check it out. You know, come back 15th. Okay. What should but, I do? Um, exactly. I told 15th. Let's go. Let's go. And binge watch the first season of Netflix. Thank you. Good night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what can I sing? What do you want me to sing? What should um, I? Whatever the spirit, however the spirit moves you. Time on my hands since you've been away, boy. I ain't got no plan. No, 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 no. And the sound of the rain against my window pane is slowly, slowly driving me insane. Oh, baby, I'm going down. I'm going down. Cause you ain't around, baby. My whole world's upside down. Yes, that is Kiki Palmer, folks. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank Congratulations you. on everything. I could thank sit here you. and talk to you all day. Oh, but I, I appreciate you for stopping by ABC Radio to chop it up about Berlin Station. Oh, yes. Please, second season two. Let's in go, Netflix. April Lewis. And of course, uh, yes, April Lewis. Yeah. That is you. And everybody else, too. And everybody else, too. Yes, yes. But um, thank you so much for stopping by. And please oh, stay tuned because you have so much going on. Yes. And she will have new music for us coming soon. It's coming so soon, you guys. I'm so excited. I'm in Atlanta. I'm working on cooking up. Everything I know that y'all kids want and need. And by kids, I don't mean literal kids. I mean everybody, because everybody's a kid to me. That's right. And and we love it. And thank you for being so motherly about that. Yeah. Of course, this is your girl, Candace Williams, here on ABC Radio. Bye.